Here are my examples that I'm going to do with you guys right now, if you guys would like. I'm going to do classroom exercise number one, and I'm going to do also number four, okay? But you also got to do two, three, two and three when you do it for one more time here. Okay, so follow along with me here too, because a lot of people find this kind of confusing about like, like huh, what do these directions mean? And then they come in, we do the jam board the next day, and, it, and a lot of people don't understand the directions to this one. And that's fine, right? So that's confusing. You don't have to get everything right away. That's why we do the jam boards after all. Kind of let you review here. So um, let's check it out. What we got right here is uh, classroom exercises. It says here in classroom exercises one through three, you're given a diagram that's marked up with given information. Give the reason for each key step of the proof. All right, and there we go. I fixed my, my picture a little bit better. We should see it a little bit more clearly now here. You see this part of the diagram here. All right, so we gotta give reason for each key step of the proof. Okay, each key step of the proof. So here we have some given information marked up here. We are looking to prove something, right? This is the thing that we're eventually trying to get to in this proof. This is our proof thing here, so that should be our last step. We just need to justify that. But before that, we need to justify why I know that's true, why I know that's true, why I know that's true, and why I know that's, that's true. Well, this is the final thing here. So I think the reason about these problems, the purpose of these problems here is to get you start thinking about paragraph proofs. The things you could say in paragraph proofs is starting with this information, how can I say this? And then how can I say that that's true? And how can I say that's true? And then finally, why do I know that that's true? And what are the reasons for that? Like, uh, and, and how can I connect them together? Okay, because we want to get a lot faster. We don't just want to write these two column proofs here that are very slow. We want to just be able to make connections. I see this up stuff here. Are we given information? How am I going to tell that AS here is congruent to DT? So I need four tick marks there. I'm going to get to that. Okay. First thing that they do here. First thing that they do here is they say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So that's here, right? ABC. Those are the large ones. ABC and DEF. Why do we know that those two triangles are, are true, are congruent? Well, here I'm giving DE is congruent to DF. Okay. Sorry. DE is congruent to AB. I'm given AC is congruent to DF. What else am I given about this large triangle? and the large triangle right here. Okay, maybe we'll do this in blue. I know a lot of colors can get overwhelming, but right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Well, I have S, 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 S. Is this S, S, S? No, we don't know ET, we don't know BS. It's SAS, it's SAS. Look, we're, they're giving us that triangle, that, sorry, angle BAC is congruent triangle EDF, right? That's what that, that's what this action means, right? This right here is that the, these, this, this whole angle here is congruent to this whole angle over here. Okay, so that means S, the reason for this is gonna be SAS. Okay, so if you're proving that, right? If you're proving that in two column proof, you're gonna have to say, oh, I know this is true, this is true, this is true. Those three things, three things are true as they're given, and then I know that the two triangles are ruined by SAS. But hey, right in paragraph proof, you can say that a bit, a bit faster. Here. Okay, then why do I know that angle C is congruent to angle F right here? Why would I then be able to know that here? Well, I've already proven these these large triangles are congruent, and then what? Those are just corresponding parts of congruent triangles, and they're congruent to one. There we go. We got this one done. We got that one done here. Simple as that. Step C. A triangle ACS is congruent to triangle DFT. Let's see here. So we prove one pair of triangles congruent. That's going to help us prove a second pair of triangles. Okay, so we needed to get that angle congruent to that angle to C, P, C, D, C, because now we want to get these freaking angles, these ones right here. Angle ACS, this right here, congruent to this right here. Well, nice, they gave us that, which is one side of that triangle. It's congruent to that, which is the one side of that triangle. And then we already knew that DF was congruent to AC because we talked about that earlier and that helped us get the blue triangles congruent. Okay, so now we got this. And then the reason why I know that these, these pink triangles, freaking pink triangle right here is congruent to this freaking pink triangle right here is by S-A-S. That's right, S-A-S, okay? So we got S-A-S right here. There we go, okay? So we're not really skipping steps. We're giving the key reason right here. And we can go ahead and wrap this up. D, okay? Once I know that those two triangles are congruent, how am I going to know, how am I going to know right now that this right here is congruent to this right here? Well, I got the two freaking pin triangles congruent, so then I, what can I use again? I can do double CPCTC in this problem. That's right. So my CPCTC, ah, we've gotten to prove that, that that segment is congruent to that segment. We had to prove two pairs of triangles congruent to get there. We need CPCTC twice. This is great. Mind blown, geometrically awakened right here. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, I just love it here. All right, so that was a pretty easy one. Maybe some of the other ones a little bit harder. I don't know, 
but at least you saw it there. I wish it was kind of harder, so I don't harder example that I did with you guys. Email me if you have questions, though. Again, you're not ex you're expecting. You should probably feel like you get like 50% of the homework correct, like when you're doing the homework the first time. And then when we review the jam board, maybe you understand 80%. Okay, 80% of the homework. And then maybe if you're coming to office hours, if you're working with your groups, if you're doing other things beyond that, that's how you're gonna raise your sort of understanding from 80% to 90% to 100%. So it's there for the taking. I hope you have the time. I hope you have the patience. I hope you have the, the discipline. If not, you're working on it. Okay, this here, here. All right, here we have state a plan for proving that angle D is congruent to angle F here. I think this is starting to get you to think about a paragraph proof, okay? So do you have to write a paragraph proof for this one? No. In general, when it says state a plan for proving this, you want yours to be pretty fast. So you can save time for other proofs that are on the homework here. But um, I might write this kind of as a paragraph proof, kind of as another example, I guess, here. So we're trying to get angle D congruent to angle F. Why would we know that that would have to be congruent to this here. And well, what can we say? Well, let's see here. We have like, ultimately, if I could prove that that triangle is congruent to that triangle, we're there, lovely, because those are corresponding parts of triangle DCE and uh, FGE. So I'm working backwards here. I'm thinking what triangle is gonna prove it congruent. Well, actually, I know this. Well, this is a freaking easy problem right here, actually. This isn't, this isn't a hard one at all. Because, hey, I know that GQ and PC are perpendicular to line DF, right? Line DF here. So these two uh, things are perpendicular. So that means that this is a right angle here. This got to be a right angle here. It's perpendicular. If you're perpendicular, you form four right angles. Definition of perpendicular right there. Um, and then we have... Uh, oh, wait, this is, this is well, it takes a little bit longer here. It looks like we could use HL, but no, we don't know a leg is congruent at all yet. So on that side, so maybe eventually we're going to prove that that triangle is congruent to that triangle. And then through CPC to C, D is congruent to F. Anyways, there's probably some easier triangles we can prove we're congruent at first. So maybe you can start the problem, again, working forward, not worrying about angle D, angle F yet. yet. We're going to work forward, meaning this is what I have given. Here's something I can say next. Uh, work forward by finding what are two pairs of triangles that are congruent in this diagram. Let's check it out. We got that. We got this. So here we have side, 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 side. Do we have a third side? No, we don't. Do we have any angles? No, we don't. Um, here, ooh, marking up diagrams. Check it out here. Remember, mark up your diagrams. Mark it up. Always mark it up. So when you have a diagram like this, what can you mark up right away? You should have marked that up, my friend. Mark that up. That's right. I'll do two tick marks here because we'll leave that with the one tick mark there. Um, so once I have that, that these two triangles are congruent by will angle, angle, angle and side. Look at this angle, angle side. Okay. So um, what I'm going to say here is maybe I'll write this as a paragraph proof. You don't have to do it. You just say I would prove those two triangles congruent by AAS, and then say what you should say next, and then. Um, something else beyond that here. Okay, so I'll write this in paragraph proof here is that, um, okay, because we know, we know CE equals EG and um, CP perpendicular to PE and GQ uh, perpendicular to uh, EF. Okay, therefore, um, angle CPE, oops, angle CPE is congruent to angle GQE because they are both right angles okay because we know that okay so because we know that c equals eg that sort of the sort of was the big thing i had to say next and the next big thing i would say is that angle cpe is congruent to angle gqe uh, because we know that um uh side angle and then and we also know that Angle PEC is congruent to angle uh, QEG because vertical angles are congruent. Oops, congruent 
Okay, then triangle PEC congruent to triangle QEG, QEG by, look at this, angle, angle, side, right? Angle, angle, side. That side is not included between the two congruent angles. Look at here. We don't know that PE is congruent to EQ. We know that a non-included side here from those two angles are congruent to one another here. So this is by A. A S. Okay. If you just had wanted to say, I could prove those two triangles congruence by A S. Um, great. You don't have to say the vertical angle thing theorem here. Well, we know that you're right about that. Um, but I'm writing out a complete paragraph proof in case you want to write a paragraph proof. You want another example of this here. Okay. Um, all right. Therefore, um, therefore, what can we do that to help us prove? How does that help us? What does this unlock about this? That in order to get you know something where we can get that angle congruent to that angle, um, so we know that those two triangles are congruent. What can we say by CPCDC to maybe say that this triangle here congruent to that triangle there, right? GQF and CPD. If we know those two triangles are congruent, then um, then we're going to know through CPCDC that angle D is congruent to angle F. Well, if I know those two triangles are congruent, I can say through CPCTC that that side and that side are freaking congruent sides. That's great here. Fantastic. And then I got, look at this. Now I got HL. I got HL, right? I got a right triangle, a right triangle here. And then I got the hypotenuses are given to us as congruent. And uh, this side congruent to that side. I'm good to go right there. Okay. So now I got to put that into words right here. Okay. Therefore, PC equals GQ by CPCTC, okay? Um, okay, and since triangle DPC and triangle F, DPC and F, uh, QG, are right triangles, okay, with, right, DC, there's another given premise here, DC equaling GF, then they are congruent by, by HL, okay, by HL, right? Through CPCTC, we got PC and GQ, those two segments were congruent to one another, we're given those segments congruent, so we've got a hypotenuse leg, hypotenuse leg, the right triangles. It means those two triangles are congruent. And now we got that. We've proven that the two triangles are congruent by HL, right? They are congruent by HL. Did I even say? Oh, yeah, yeah. These two triangles are congruent by HL, right? Triangle DPC congruent to triangle FQG. Um, therefore, we can get to what it was that we were trying to prove, which was that angle D is congruent to angle F. So angle D is congruent to angle F by CPCTC. Okay, so hopefully you watch that to get another example of what a paragraph proof looks like, right? If you're trying to write a paragraph proof, I just figured I'd do that as an example. In your homework, when you're doing this problem here, state a plan for proving angle D is congruent to angle F. You can do that much more simply. It can be just much more like this here, where you just mentioned the key steps. Well, I know that triangle EPC is congruent to triangle E. Uh, QG by uh, AAS, and you don't even have to say the vertical angles. I can tell you that you've got it. Um, and then I would use CPCDC to say that PC equals GQ. Um, and then once I know that, I can prove triangle GQF congruence to triangle CPD by HL, and therefore by CPCDC, I know that angle D is congruent to angle F. So you still have to write a decent amount there. There's still about four or five things you need to string together in order to prove that fact. Okie dokie, those are my two examples for the homework. Best of luck on the rest of it. So if you watched it, you've got it down, good, you're in good shape, get up and going. Um, don't overthink these ones here. Just give, just tell why you know it's true. And then you're good to go. Eight problems tonight, no more than five minutes of problem. And you should be in good shape. We'll review these on the Jamboard tomorrow. Welcome back, guys. I look forward to seeing you in person tomorrow. Take care. Bye.